you on the program tonight. Uh, we are going to uh, focus and look at the word this evening, hypocrite, a word that uh, almost everybody's familiar with, certainly that's read their Bible or had any dealings with society. I want to see what the Bible says a real hypocrite is and understand this. That hypocrisy, that of being a biblical hypocrite, is a sentence worthy of death. In other words, the second death. Hypocrites will go to hell as the liars and the murderers, the Bible says. What is a hypocrite? And how can we see and know hypocrisy in our midst? Where do we see the majority of the hypocrites today? Who are the dangerous ones? But first, we've got to focus in on the word itself and what the Bible says about hypocrisy and the hypocrite. Now, this is a subject that the Bible speaks of from all through the Bible. Uh, the word hypocrite is found over and over and over. Hypocrites found over and over and over in the Bible. But one particular area that I want us to look at is that that pertains to leadership and those that have rule over us or those that reign over us. The Bible is a book of wisdom. There are five books in the Bible that is specifically set there for the wisdom of God to be given to us. The book of Job is one of those books. And in Job chapter 34 and verse 30, Job said that the hypocrite reign not, lest the people be ensnared. Job is saying that if hypocrites reign, if hypocrites rule, then the people will be ensnared. The reason Job is saying that the hypocrite will ensnare you, and that word means trap, and we'll look into it a little more in just a minute. The reason that Job is saying that the hypocrite will entrap you, will snare you, is because the hypocrite is a, a deceiver. The hypocrite deceives. The hypocrite is a hypocrite to deceive, to gain, to maintain power for themselves, to get gain, to get riches, to receive wealth and fame, power for themselves. So hypocrisy in the hypocrite is the one that deceives. Now again, you should be familiar with the passage of scripture that warned us that in the last days that the deceivers would wax worse and worse, the Bible said, deceiving and being deceived. So the Bible points out to us that in, in the last days, whenever the collapse of the human brain takes place and we fall then into the hands of Antichrist, when the church is, is, is gone, when the church has died, when the church is uh, no longer effective, uh, when the church has reduced itself down to ear tickling, no longer receiving sound doctrine as the scripture told us, that they would not endure sound doctrine, but they would heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. That process alone eliminates, us from the, wis eliminates the wisdom of God, eliminates the knowledge of God eliminates the discernment of God working in us. So anyone that would seek to deceive, destroy, corrupt a people would have to remove God from the picture. That's been being worked out now for more than 60 years, 70 years in the United States that the people have been spiritually dumbed down until the churches now have become nothing but uh, halls of humanized psychology and political correctness until the church is no longer a benefit to the kingdom of God. I mean, as a whole, there are still churches here and there, but God knows you're going to have to look for them to find them. That is still preaching the truth and the word of God. Nonetheless, the hypocrite is the deceiver, those that would wax worse and worse. So since synonymous with hypocrisy, hypocrite is deception and deceivers, then of course, along with the deceivers waxing worse and worse, more and more deceivers coming, then what the Bible is telling us is that the biblical hypocrites 
will increase greatly as the breakdown takes place, the mental breakdown. Our inability to see and know them. Job specifically said that when the hypocrite rules, not to let him reign, not to let him rule, because they will ensnare the people, they will trap the people. This is exactly what the Bible was talking about when it said in the book of Proverbs, woe be unto you when the wicked beareth rule. The hypocrite is the deceiver. The hypocrite is wicked. And whenever the hypocrite rules, people are trapped and ensnared. This is why we must have the working gift of discerning of spirits so that we will know who it is, what it is, we're dealing with. And we must be able to see through the act of the hypocrite. Let me give you the definition in the New Testament of the word hypocrite. The word hypocrite is an actor under an assumed character, a stage player. So hypocrisy, according to the Bible, are actors. Hypocrites are actors. They are presenting a fictitious character to you for the reason of which they desire to do so, which is power and gain for themselves, which always means enslavement to the people. This is why the Bible says that they will entrap you. The word entrap in the book of Job means a noose, a hook, to be ensnared, to be trapped. So those that are in power, that are hypocrites, deceivers, wicked, are noose carriers. They are trap setters. They are the ones that ensnare the people, as Job said and as Proverbs said, for their own personal gain and their own personal power. Their desire for power is to have it locked in to where none of you, none of us, is able to remove them or touch their power. This is what they want. This is why the Bible warns us over and over and over not to allow ourselves to be taken by the hypocrite, by the wicked, by the deceivers. They carry nooses, nooses for your neck, traps like rat traps, dangling free cheese over the governmental rat traps that causes many to run in only to get their necks snapped in the trap because the free cheese that they promise comes with a price. And it is that you are locked continually and forever. You, the generation coming behind you, and the generation coming behind them are locked into poverty because they were ensnared by fictitious characters pretending to be something that they are not. Now, as we're looking at our nation and as we are seeing right now perilous times, as we are witnessing and seeing with our own eyes right here and right now, the destruction of this country we look and see who fits the bill of what the Bible says are the ensnarers, the trappers, the deceivers, the hypocrites. And we see the party of which they come from. Again, I must say as always, we have people ruling over us and at this moment we have the right to speak, to express our views and our opinions. Now I am warning the country, not of what I see is wrong, I'm warning, the, I'm warning the country over what the Bible says you need to be warned about. You need to be warned about deceivers. You need to be warned about actors. You need to be warned by those who appear to be sheep but are actually wolves dressed in sheep's clothing. The deceivers that the Bible talks about, hence the hypocrite. And as we look at our political process, there's good and bad people across the board. 
But systemically, as a whole, as a functioning op operation, where are we seeing this hypocrisy in its clearest form? And where we're seeing it in its clearest form, we must understand that there is where the greatest danger is being pre presented. And we have to see it. So there are basically two groups of political powers in America. One of them calls themselves Republicans, good and bad characters there. And another group is called the Democrats, mostly bad characters there, as we see played out on the national screen. We're going to look tonight at blatant, open hypocrisy that even a fool can see. The only ones that will not see it and recognize it is this, as this openly clear hypocrisy are those who are of the same sort. Let's first start with this group that calls themselves Democrats. Let's focus in on children. Let's focus on the border crisis and what's taking place right now. These people that call themselves Democrats obviously get together and plan the words that they are going to say. They and the media that supports them. Because they will all come out saying exactly the same words across the media, across the different uh, news uh, outlets, all of them saying exactly the same words over and over and over and over. Well, that's not a coincidence. They got together and said, this is the word we want drilled into the head of the American people. And so they all say it together. They are a unified group, a unification, a unified group of hypocrites. Now, here recently... We've seen and heard this argument about the borders. Instead of dealing with the problems that are obvious, there are murderers coming across the border. Well, they say, well, they're not all murderers. I don't care if they're all murderers. The nonsense of that, again, is painfully clear. If the city was going to release 10 German shepherds in your neighborhood, one of the German shepherds was known to have rabies and violet and had in the past bit and even killed children. Nine of the German shepherds that they're about to release is fine. But there's one German shepherd that is in the midst of the ten dogs that's a killer full of rabies and has already killed before. Who in the neighborhood would not demand that the city keep all 10 dogs locked up until the one with the rabies was found and removed from them? Then maybe we would let all 10, well, the remaining nine, get turned loose in the neighborhood. Find the one with the rabies, get him out of the bunch, and then turn them loose. But do not turn them loose until you know which one of the 10 is the killer dog with rabies. Now there's not a person listening to me right now in any community in America, rich, poor, white, black, yellow, brown, nowhere would you not call your city? You would not deal with your government in your city demanding for the sake of your children that they not turn the dogs loose until they know which one is the killer dog. So is it with the border. And these people that's called Democrats focus only, not, not, not ever on the murderers and the lives to be saved on this side of the fence, but they focus on the babies, the babies, because they love the babies. They care about the babies and their sympathetic, loving souls who sees the sacredness of the baby. And so they play on the babies. And so we have to let them all in because the babies, which again is an orchestrated event. 
I have used the term before and I use it again. These are soul stealers. The four components of the human soul, the mind, the will, the intellect, the emotions. They are seeking to destroy your ability to judge by robbing you, stealing your emotions. It is the work of devils. They seek to emotionally blind you and they do so with the children. Well, now here recently, since this border crisis and this border fight has been going on, obviously all the Democrats has gotten together. These people call themselves Democrats. They have all gotten together and said, let's show ourselves family loving, children loving. Let's parade our children out in front of the nation to let everybody see how loving we are to our children to subconsciously get the message across that they are the lovers of children, evil Republicans are the killers of children and locking them in cages. Well, it started back in late December when Barack Obama, for the first time that I know of, certainly the first time ever televised, he decided to visit a children's clinic and be Santa Claus. <laughs> My reindeer were, uh, you know, they were stuck in some snow, and, but I just wanted to make sure that I, I made the trip and I had a chance to see all you guys. Then following right behind that is Nancy Pelosi salivating over receiving the power of the gavel of the Speaker of the House now. As she received her power back, she requested that her grandchildren come up there with her. All orchestrated events by the actors. And strangely enough, there was 30 or 40, 50 kids all among the Congress watching Nancy receive her power back. And she calls all the children up to show us how much they love babies, all in connection with the soul stealing at the southern border. I'd like to call my grandchildren up to be here when I take the oath. Yes. And any other children who want to join them. Come on, kids. Mimi. <laughs> 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 First it was Barack, now it's Nancy, the actors. Then there was Gavin Newsom, the newly appointed governor of the state of California. While he was giving his speech, it was said that his son broke away from his mother and ran up to daddy. But we'll see it's just an act. Our job now is not to rest on that foundation, it's to build our house upon it. And now more than ever, we Californians know how much a house matters and children <laughs> matter. <You> good. <laughs> no. Because so many of our neighbors have lost theirs. Together, let us build a, a house stronger than the coming storms, yet open to the world. A house that provides shelter to all who need it and sanctuary to all who seek it. It must have been the Lord 
right at the moment that Mr. Newsom with his sanctuary city and sanctuary state was talking about the sanctuary cities of California, that his son just broke loose from mama and ran up and got in his arms. This is what the Bible's talking about. These are actors. This child did not break loose from mama. Look down in the bottom of the left of the screen and you will see mama actually send him on his way. It's all staged. It's all an act. Exactly the definition of the word hypocrite that I read to you at the beginning of the program. Barack Obama going and visiting the children. Nancy Pelosi bringing a whole house full of children to receive her power. Gavin Newsom then following. His son breaks away and comes to his arms just as he's talking about his sanctuary cities. This is hypocrisy and these are soul stealers, the most dangerous souls that live. And then there's Chuck Schumer. People who enter the United States without our permission are illegal aliens, and illegal aliens should not be treated the same as people who entered the U.S. legally. People who enter the United States without our permission are illegal aliens, and illegal aliens should not be treated the same as people who entered the U.S. legally. Now that's pretty clear, isn't it? So it means that this Chuck is the hypocrite. This is the acting Chuck. This executive order was, was mean-spirited and un-American. People who enter the United States without our permission are illegal aliens, and illegal aliens should not be treated the same as people who entered the U.S. legally. And this is the act of Barack Obama before he was Santa Claus. We cannot allow people to pour into the U.S. undetected, undocumented, and unchecked. And then this is the actor for MSNBC, the host of one of their news programs, Rachel Meadow, Meadow, whatever. As she's talking about these children, and as you see pictures of her, she cannot help but cry right on screen. But the thing about it was, was all this was going on under Barack Obama. She didn't only not cry, she never uttered a word about those poor children. The media went on to send these pictures out telling the American people that this is what Donald Trump was doing on the border, putting babies in cages, which then brought forth all of what you have just seen. The hypocrites, the actors acting like they love these babies. But then they came to find out that the pictures of which they were using to condemn Donald Trump these were the pictures taken while Barack Obama was the president. But Rachel wasn't crying then. Chuck wasn't crying then. Barack wasn't Santa Claus then. And Pelosi wasn't gathering all the neighborhood kids to come flock around her and show the love for the children. Without question, these are the actors, the hypocrites, of which the Bible specifically warns us of. The trap setters, without question, the soul stealers. Let me make a quick announcement before we get ready to go off. Uh, the 31st of this month, Sky Angel will be going off of the air. We will still be here on direct Saturday and Sunday. If you're watching on Dish, we will no longer be on the air after the 31st. Dish, uh, Sky Angel is going off the air. Also, I will be in Searcy, Arkansas, the 26th and the 27th. Of, uh, of this month uh, on a Saturday night and Sunday. Uh, so there'll be a number on the screen now that you can call if you want to directions, if you're able to get out. As we close out with this uh, acting role of these Democrats and these children, the best testimony against them would be this right here. This is a living baby moving inside of a womb. These actors that pretend that they love children so much are the ones who has made it legal and continue to fight tooth and nail to keep it legal, to shoot acid in the back of that child's neck and kill it. So as they mutter 
as they mumble their hypocrisy. Let this unborn child testify against them. Merry Christmas! My reindeer were, uh, uh, they were stuck in some snow, uh, but I just wanted to make sure that I, I made the trip and I had a chance to see all you. This executive order was, was mean spirited, un American. Remember the one that talked to you When you were lost, he told you what to do Remember the one that you leaned on When your world was ending and you were alone Look back at that cross, brother, as you walk off. Look at the treasures you will have lost. A blood-washed family, your children and wife. Blessed assurance, eternal life. At the foot of that cross Then kiss them goodbye As you walk off Remember the one Mama prayed to the one that she asked to protect you. Remember the one that made your dreams come true. That eight pound boy that God gave you. The back of that cross from as you walk off Just look at the treasures You will have lost Streets of gold 